So now that we've learned what a random variable is, whether it be discrete or continuous, we are going to be looking at specific types of um, probability distributions. So the first one is a binomial distribution. Um, and what makes something a binomial experiment? It's a probability experiment that satisfies these four conditions. So the first one is that there has to be, um, there's a fixed number of trials. So we know how many trials are occurring in the experiment. Um, the second part, which is the most important part, each trial results in either a success or a failure. So it's kind of like a yes or no, either it's successful or it's not. There's no in between. Um, the probability of success is the same for each trial. So, probability of success is the same for each trial. So, um, something like flipping a coin, the success of getting a heads and getting a tails, it is, that is the same. So that is another um, part of it. And then you must have independent trials. So what that means is the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other. So for example, if you flip a coin, if you flip heads the first time, that's not going to affect flipping a tails the next time or flipping another heads the next time. All right. So we have some notations here um, that we are going to be using in a binomial experiment. And this box should be around all of them. All right, so N in a binomial experiment is talking about the number of times a trial is repeated. Number of times a trial is repeated. For P, that is the probability of success. For Q, that is the probability of failure, which is always one minus the probability of success, so one minus P. Um, <clears throat> and X, sometimes you see this as R, is um, the number of successes. In N trials. So N is the number of times a trial is repeated, P is the probability of success, Q is the probability of failure, which is 1 minus P, and then X or R. So you'll see it as both X and R is the number of successes in the N trials. So it says, decide whether the experiment is a binomial experiment. If it is, specify n, p, and q, and list the possible values of the random variable x. If not, explain why. So we have this example. A certain surgical procedure has an 85% chance of success. A doctor performs the procedure on eight patients. The random variable represents the number of successful surgeries. So here, if we want to list out our information, N, P, Q, and X, um, before we do that, we have to decide if it is a binomial experiment. So is there a fixed number of trials? The doctor performs a procedure on eight patients. So yes, those are the trials. Um, each trial results in a success or failure. So it has an 85% chance of success. So obviously, it either it works or it doesn't. Um, the probability of success is the same for each trial. Yes, it says 85% chance of success. And then if a doctor performs a surgery on one patient, that's not going to affect him performing a surgery on another, another patient. So that's what makes it independent. So now we're going to go through and list out N, P, Q, and possible values of X. So for N... 
is the number of um, trials. That would be eight because it's being performed on eight people. So that means it's occurring eight times. P, the probability of success, it tells us it's 85%. So as a decimal, 85% becomes 0.85. Q is always one minus the probability of success. So if you do one minus 0.85, you get 0.15 as your Q value. And for X, um, this would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So X is talking about the number of successes. So we can either have zero successes of the eight, we can have one, we can have two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So listing out the possible values of X um, is basically listing what are the possible successes. And it's usually the num um, zero to whatever your number of trials is. Moving on to the next example. So it says a jar contains five marbles nine blue and six green marbles. You randomly select three from the jar without putting them back. The random variable represents the number of red marbles. So if we think of what we need to be a probability experiment, there's a fixed number of trials. Um, so yes, you select three marbles. So that's three trials. So it follows that. Each trial results in either success or failure. The random variable, remember, um, so yes, either you get a red marble or you don't. Um, probability of success is the same for each trial. So that is not true because here we have five red, nine blue. So if you think of our probabilities, the probability of getting a red marble is five out of the total. The probability of getting a blue is nine out of the total. Those are two different probabilities. So it does not follow number three. And most importantly, number four, independent trials if we're not putting the marbles back, when we draw out our first marble, that's going to affect the probability of the next marble we draw out because there's one less marble in there. So this is not a probability experiment or a binomial experiment because it is not independent and the probability is not the same for all trials. So to actually find the probabilities here, there is a formula. The formula is going to look super confusing, but there's actually a way to do it on the calculator, which I'm going to show you. So the probability, so the probability of X is always equal to N C X. So this is like your combination. So N, usually it's NCR, but here it's X. You could also put R if you wanted to. Then the probability to the power of X times the probability of failure to the N minus X. So now this right here, NCX, that is equal to N factorial over N minus X factorial times X factorial and then p to the x and q to the n minus x. So these are both the same. If you have a calculator and can plug this in, do it this way. If not, and you have to do it by hand, you would do it this way. So um, microfracture knee surgery has a 75% chance of success. So that is our p, chance of success, 0.75. Remember, when you're plugging something into a formula, you can't plug it in as a percent. It has to be a decimal. On patients with degenerative knees, the surgery is performed on three patients. So three is our number of trials. So that's N and equals three. Find the probability of the surgery being successful on exactly two patients. So the number of successes, we want that to be two. So before when we listed out, it was because they didn't tell us how many successes we had. Here we want the number of successes to be two. So now from this, we can find Q, which is one minus P. So Q is 0.25. And if we plug it into our formula, we have 
3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 0.75 to the second times 0.25, so I'm just going to put this in parentheses, to the 3 minus 2. So now you can do this all on your um, iPhone calculator. So anytime you have a 3 with the exclamation point, 3 factorial, that's multiplying 3 times 2 times 1. So that gives us 6 over 3 minus 2 is 1 factorial. So over 1 times 2 times 1 is 2. So over 1 times 2, which is just 2. And then 0.75 um, squared is 0.5625. And 3 minus 2, so this up here is 1. So 0.25 to the first is 0.25. And now we're going to multiply. So 6 divided by 2, this becomes 3. So our final answer is multiplying 3 times 0.5625 times 0.25. So you do that. We get a probability of 0.42. So P of X equals 0.42. So that means we have a 42% chance of having exactly two patients with a successful knee surgery.